G'day, it's Clint here. And first of all, a big thank you to everyone who participated in our survey that we did last August. That's August 2021, where I sent an email out to our mailing list and asked whether or not people who have had the COVID vaccine have had an associated increase of symptoms after taking the vaccine. And that has now uh, been compiled into a manuscript and been submitted and accepted by a medical journal. So what you're looking at now on the screen, if you're watching the video, um, in the International Journal of Disease Reversal and Prevention, our publication based on information that was gathered from you, our rheumatoid arthritis community, called the Incidence of Autoimmune Arthritis Disease Flare Following SARS COVID Vaccine 2 Vaccination and its association with concurrent NSAID use. So what we did is we asked a bunch of questions on this particular survey, and the answers to those questions were then compiled and data analysis was run by Dr. Vidhi Bharti uh, and also Dr. Rachel Bailey, both PhD doctors. And uh, together, myself and uh, Rachel Bailey, uh, put together the manuscript uh, for submission. Now, before I look at the results, I just want to say how fun this was, because getting a getting a, uh, something published in the medical literature, um, it's it's like a it's a buzz, you know. It's it's really cool because you feel like something you've done has been validated um, and can and contributes to the broader collective of information that exists to help other people. Um, you know, learn more and to know more and build on that collective knowledge. The last journal that I have published into uh, was back in 1998, and I was studying laser physics or optoelectronics, actually specifically. And I published a paper when I was in my honors year at university called the simultaneous fabrication of multiple fiber Bragg gratings using frequency doubled copper vapor lasers. And uh, that, was, uh, that was a huge buzz back when I was in my early 20s. Um, and so it's, it's, kind of, uh, it's kind of fun for me to see that the topic is so vastly different instead of staying in the uh, optical fiber and high tech uh, career. Uh, I lost my job due to the collapse of that industry in the, in the year 2000. And uh, went on to other things and ended up with a disease that's taken me on this path. So what did we want to try and achieve? We just wanted to find out whether or not if you have the COVID vaccine, if you are likely to get more symptoms as a result, if you have psoriatic arthritis or lupus or ankylosing spondylitis or rheumatoid. And this is what we did. We uh, did the survey and ran the stats. So 1,348 people filled out the survey. A massive thank you for participating if you did participate because it enabled us to gather this information. And to cut to the chase so that you, know, you get the point straight away right here is that we found out that there was an association uh, between getting the vaccine and then having a subsequent increase in symptoms. And we can only use the word association. We can't say it caused it because that's not, that can't be proven. We can only say that patient reported association did exist. To what extent? Well, I'll, I'll cut to that chase as well. Uh, what we observed is that 21% of people in our survey uh, reported experiencing an increase of inflammatory arthritis symptoms. That's 21%. And 14% indicated a possible mild flare or perhaps a little. And these reactions uh, associated with the vaccine uh, were reported by an ongoing 41% of participants. So that at the time of the survey, they still had the symptoms that they uh, reported increased as a result of the uh, vaccine. Now, what we also looked at is whether or not this was consistent with some other studies. And if you're looking at the information on the screen, you'll be able to see that. Um, uh, actually, we didn't put it into the results. So 
the, res- the I'm not looking at the full study here. I'm just looking at the uh, at the summary. Uh, but what we found is this was uh, considerably similar to other published results in this area, of which there was only other t- two other sort of studies like this done. Uh, one study uh, reported similar kind of numbers, just a little bit less, rather than twenty one percent. And the other study, which was actually put together by the nurses, not the patients, and that showed lower numbers. And we found that interesting that when patients were telling it themselves, uh, the reported incidence was higher compared to um, a different study where patients was uh, the the data was being entered by. Uh, someone else, in that case, a nurse practitioner. Now, coming out of this study, besides the main in- information, which was there's about a, a, a you know a, a one in five incidence of reported increase in inflammation, um, and that it tended to last in forty percent of cases, uh, still with the patient after it's happened. Um, what we also found is that the incident of of associated reactivity increased when people were taking non-steroidal anti-inflammatories or NSAIDs. Now, it wasn't clear as to whether or not that was because they were taking non-steroidals or whether or not the incidence of a vaccine-associated flare was because they had greater disease activity and therefore needed to take the NSAIDs. And so in that sense, what we would have benefited from greatly in the study is some inflammatory marker readings of CRP or ESR at the time of vaccination. And what that would have then told us is that, oh, it's not because they're taking non-steroidals, it's because they're more inflamed and therefore the association with the um, inflammation post-vaccine is, is greater. We don't know that. We weren't able to to find that information. We were also um, able to identify that it didn't matter whether or not you had the different forms of inflammatory arthritis and whether or not you were more likely to have an inflammatory reaction. So someone with ankylosing spondylitis, we were not able to find any correlation that they are more likely to react than someone with rheumatoid. Um, The limited number of people with ankylosing spondylitis who responded to the survey um, meant that um, this data was was not as available as what you know we would have liked to explore further. So we saw no difference between the different inflammatory arthritis categories. Um, we also did not observe any difference with how long someone had had the condition. So someone who was newly diagnosed was not more likely to re- react to the vaccine negatively than someone who who had had it for a very long time. Um, and nor did we see any, any uh, data of statistical significance associating the type of vaccine. So whether or not it was a Pfizer or Johnson & Johnson, uh, AstraZeneca, whatever, we did not see any correlation between one company type or branding of vaccine and an increase or a different outcome of likelihood of inflammatory uh, association post-vaccine. So in summary, what we're able to show is that um, whilst uh, there hasn't been many studies like this done before, all of which were survey-based, ours showed a slightly higher incidence in associated post-vaccine inflammation of 21%. Uh, of which an additional 14% said maybe a little bit, and that a, for a large portion of people that inflammation was ongoing. This was slightly more than, than other studies, uh, especially one where nurses were reporting the post-vaccine uh, inflammation. We were able to show an association with non steroidal and inflammatory use, and we were able to uh, show no association with any of those other categories that I mentioned. So. Whilst admittedly the push for vaccine has become more uh, in the rear vision mirror now, as most people have been vac- vaccinated, there are still a small percentage uh, who haven't been vaccinated who are sitting on the fence and wondering about whether or not the vaccine could be something that they uh, are still going to undertake. 
So this information gives you the stats. Uh, you know, again, we surveyed 1,348 people. So it's a sizable and really uh, valuable um, large number of people that have been surveyed. And I hope you find that really, really helpful. Um, I appreciate everyone for, uh, for helping us put this together. As I said, it was a buzz for me. It enabled me to collaborate with some really smart people and get this published in this fabulous journal, International Dis Journal of Disease Reversal and Prevention. We don't have any data on the booster because this was done before the boosters became rolled out more fully. And so people who have been surveyed in this particular study were either having undergone the first or, the, or both doses. So the participants were simply anyone who has had a reaction post-vaccine injection, whether it be first or second dose. So I hope that's helpful. And again, I'm very grateful for our community for helping me put this together. And perhaps we can do some other studies in the future. Um, and I'm, I'm once again, just really thankful. So thanks a lot. Mm -hmm.